guys. Today, we're just going to look at eight of the craziest knives that are here. So not much else to say. It's already going to be a long video. Let's turn this around and crack into some insanity. Guys, you heard the intro. We're going to look at eight of the craziest knives you've ever seen. And we're going to start with this big boy right here. The Artisan Knives a proponent. This design was done by Dirk Pinkerton. Artisan Knives did a great job with this, but this is absolutely insane. This thing is massive. You are looking at just about nine inches overall, but dimensionally, it's massive. Across the back, you're looking at a blade, th a blade thickness of just under two inches. This thing is absolutely nuts. It's a frame lock. Now, I have to say, for as insane as it is, this thing is really, really good. There is a secondary pin you can use to lock this up and make it basically into a fixed blade. And for as nuts as this design is, it's really comfortable in hand and it has a very good cutting angle. Now, this is done in a very sharp angled Warren Cliff blade, polished fuller. This works off of thumb studs or the flipper tab. And this thing is incredibly smooth. Uh, the titanium milling and everything that was done on this, just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. This is one of those knives that just kind of shows off what artisan cutlery can do. Pocket clip on it, big pocket clip, and it is reversible. All the hardware on it is just big, like industrial style lugs and stuff like that. But I've done some cutting with this and it is really, really good. And like I said, the action on it, not just that the blade is heavy is just drop shut. There's no friction in that. There's not. You can hear the detent ball rubbing on the blade and that's it. And that's only because it's a coarse satin on those flats. But as far as friction in the pivot, nothing. Now, this thing is chunky. It is heavy. It is big and it's over the top. And that's part of why I love it. So if, if you're in the market for something crazy like this, I will put as many links to these knives as I can down below for purchase. But this might be one that's up your alley. Let's move on to what could be the craziest looking one of the bunch. And it's the Wii Knives Eschaton, which was designed by Elijah Isham. Now, you guys know I was friends with Elijah Isham, so this kind of has a special place in my heart, but this thing is absolutely insane. I talked with Elijah about why this knife even exists, and he was like, I just wanted to see how crazy a knife could get and what I could get We Knife Company to make. The frame on this, one piece of titanium, and then it has got these carbon fiber scales, not truly an integral, but close to it, ultra, ultra late. The blade is almost as much air as it is blade. These were done in M390 steel, but I got to tell you, even with the weirdness of it, it's still comfortable. It is a comfortable knife. This looks like something that a super villain would use in a movie. Um, it reverse flick and flipper, but this thing is nuts. Look at all the crazy angles. So this is a very weird style of like a reverse, like a Tonto, but the, the point is all the way back here. Then you've got what is a Warren Cliff style edge up here at the front, all these facets, all these cutouts, even the hardware is unique The because it's got these grooves cut in it. And then into the handle, you've got all these crazy cutouts and things like that on the handle to give it facets. And then a very unique looking pocket clip. This is probably the lightest knife in the house. This is probably the lightest thing I have ever handled as far as a knife that size, because you're looking overall just at nine inches. So just a really ultra light, ultra weird, ultra interesting knife. This is not something I would ever carry for everyday use, but yeah, you can see Escaton, Isham Designs, all this stuff. Really, really cool knife. I love the fact that it's so insane and it kind of just exemplifies what Elijah was about. So it's just craziness. So, all right, guys, let's move on to the next knife. The Tashi Barucha Design OAO. Now, this is not just visually striking and unique. There's a lot going on under the hood. So you've got this really cool fat carbon fiber. They call it jungle, jungle wear fat carbon fiber. And it looks like the old 1980s style camouflage that kids wore in school when I was going to elementary and high school and junior high. But it's also got a very unique design language to it. This is super, super comfortable because of all these things that Tashi did on this. Now, on top of the fact it's visually striking, there's a lot going on under the hood. This is one of the lightest integrals you are going to find. 
there are very few that are going to be this light. And the only way to, for it to be lighter than this is if it was smaller than this. Matter of fact, I've seen that some that are smaller than this that are heavier. But you have no exposed hardware. And that's because this screw and this screw are the only things that truly are holding these scales in place. Because they're dovetailed in, that's all you need. They don't move around. They don't play because they're dovetailed in on all three sides. This is the exposed part. Now, once you open this up and take it apart, there's a screw here. You take your pivot screw out. There's a plate that allows you access to your washers and stuff. But the, the really crazy thing is that the washer on this side, there's a, there's a washer that sits, the washer on this side is keyed and you have to put it in and then put the plate back on top. So there's a lot of really cool thought that went into this, but on top of all of that, it is beautiful and striking and is one of the best knives I've had come in a long time. So there's a lot of uniqueness to this, not just visually. It is absolutely one of the most incredibly weirdly engineered knives that I've seen. And it just works so well. Like you can't even feel the transitions on this carbon fiber and they don't move at all. Even there's a, only one screw holding them in. So just absolutely crazy and awesome. And I love the fact that it's here. So let's move on. This is the Pinkerton Knives Inversion, which is a really interesting, visually interesting, unique knife. And it's got some really cool features about it. So first and foremost, this is a folding picol. So if you look at it, technically, the blade is on this backwards. Really, if you want to look at it, it, it just seems completely backwards. You've got this reverse grip, which is how you're supposed to hold it. This is for self-defense. It's a very interesting look. So you've got a flipper tab. You also have got a thumb plate or thumb disc, but it also waves off the pocket. So you have multiple deployment methods. It has got some modularity to it, which is really cool. There is a replacement piece here that is a thumb disc. There's also a replacement pocket clip that's a deeper carry pocket clip. You can remove this ring and carry it without the ring if you want. But I got to tell you, one of the craziest things is how good this is. I'd never seen a folding picol. I'd never gotten to see one. This thing is absolutely amazing. It waves out of the pocket incredibly good with this wave feature that's on it. It's striking and it just looks crazy. It looks like a bird. I have to admit, it looks like a bird perched on a stick right there when you look at it. But as far as being a perfect design for what it was intended for, absolutely incredible. This thing in this grip, if you were to get it in this grip, it still would work amazingly well. You've got jimping there. Just a crazy, crazy looking knife that has a specific purpose design. I love this thing. Dirk sent this to me. And then on top of the uniqueness and craziness, it is one of the only knives I've ever had come from the factory with a complete orange peel on all surfaces. It is orange peeled from head to toe and it's really light because they did some weight reduction. Absolutely dig this. Go check it out. It's the only place you can get this is Pinkerton Knives. So go over to Dirk's website, check him out, give him some love. This is a great, great design. This is the Finch Buffalo Tooth. And I have to admit, this is a knife I did not expect to like. This is based on an old, old uh, slip joint pattern called an elephant's tooth. And this thing is absolutely amazing. So this is Jig Titanium and 154 CM steel. And this is absolutely a cutter. You get up on this and you just want to power through everything. It's got a really good behind the edge thickness. 154 CM that is incredibly sharp out of box. But it is not just the vision, the, 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 how good it is. This is visually so unique. It is over an inch and a half wide. It is just about an inch and a half wide closed. The, the blade still has the nail nicks on it, even though it's a flipper. They jimped the flipper here so that you can get up on it. These are all unique features that I'm not seeing on a lot of knives. The jigged bone is done so well. It's done in a fashion that makes it look like it's got a bolster and then a pommel. And it really duplicates that look you would get from jigged bone. And I mean, you can just see it's, it's striking how it looks in the light. The frame lock on it, amazing. Action on this is amazing. One of the coolest things that Finch Knives does is almost every one of their knives has this logo embedded in it and it's glow in the dark. So, you know, you can charge it up with a UV light. You can leave it out in the sun. But I never expected to like this so much. And I found that this is one of the most functional knives and one of my favorites in the Finch line of knives. Uh, the, the pocket clip, everything about this just is 
incredibly good. I love the way it looks. And I really have to, a big shout out to Finch Knives for sending this along. I love everything about this. And there's a bunch of different versions of this as well. So there you go. Finch Buffalo Tooth, one of the craziest designs that I absolutely fell in love with. So let's move on. I have to tell you that this one is nuts. I, and it's because of how much I like it in this form factor. This is the Ocaso Knives Solstice, and it is so thin. It is so thin compared to the Buffalo Tooth, their opposite end of the spectrum. But this thing is nuts. It is so well done. Super, super good. It's done in a liner lock titanium, so it's got a steel liner lock inside the titanium scales. But the action on this, look at that. And then this blade transitions down to one of the scariest profiles I've seen in a knife. This is a this is an ice pick that somebody pounded out flat and sharpened. This thing is insane. And it is so, so sharp for being such a narrow blade. They did such a good job not only just transitioning it, but getting down and finding a good angle for the edge. The factory edge on this is ridiculous sharp. And then it is so smooth. It is just shy of drop shut. And that's a very light blade. Most knives that drop shut, it's because of the blade weight. This will fit in a shirt pocket. It looks like you're carrying a pin and you can reverse this pocket clip. There's a little little nub here that sits in there. You can definitely reverse this pocket clip. It's awesome that they allow you to do that. And then when you get it in hand, you're like, not only is that thin, you would expect it to not feel good in hand. Super comfortable. You've got really good jimping. This is one of the craziest designs I've had come in that I absolutely adore. And then you can carry this so deep. Like I said, you put that in a shirt pocket. It looks like you're carrying a pin. So if you don't, if you don't have, you know, if you work somewhere where you don't have the ability to carry a knife, you might get away with putting this in your shirt pocket and it'll look like a pin. Uh, but yeah, it's just nuts how good this is and how skinny it is and how much I like it. So yeah, awesome, awesome knife. Let's go ahead and move on. Guys, this is the RS Chaos and this is an insane looking knife, uh, visually striking open or closed. So you've got this crazy compound grind Warrencliffe. You've got this bigger, thicker area back here, and then the nice actual Warrencliffe, which is ground very, very thin. The handles on it are all titanium, and then you've got all this milling. It is done in a push-button compression lock, very similar to the lock that was on the Spyderco smock, which is basically a push-button compression, which is what this is. So Spyderco's patent for that lock expired a while back. Uh, this is very, very good. I absolutely love this thing in hand. You've got this big choil up here where you can definitely get up on it. It looks aggressive and striking. All the hardware is really well done and cool. Pocket clip on this futuristic looking and it looks angular and everything, but it's very comfortable in hand in and out of pocket. It's great. Full backspacer on this. The action is insane on this. Vosti Knives has really nailed their, their bearing systems and their action. The the, the just the feel of that, the solidness of that when it flips open and closed is so, so good. You've got a big lanyard hole on this, but on this knife, I like that it, it gives you a little bit of symmetry. You've got the hole there and the hole there. So on this knife, the pocket clip is really, really cool. The lines on this knife are awesome. It just is an all around crazy looking knife, but it really performs very well when you get down to it. You could cut anything you want with this. This thing is really nice behind the edge. This is just a great all around I, knife. I love a lot of the Vosteed's knife stuff, but a lot of times their stuff is kind of just plain and simple. This is one that's more over the top and crazy and I love it and I hope they do more with it. So let's go ahead and move on to our last knife, the Beyond EDC Gara, designed Gara, Gara, however you want to say it, designed by Dirk Pinkerton. This thing is crazy, crazy looking. The overall lines of the knife, it's got this swept area here. It looks very aggressive and predatory. In hand, so, so comfortable. This blade is done really well. Nice recurve on this. It is down to a nice behind the edge thickness. Used it enough. I had to resharpen it. It cuts really, really well. You can get up on it with some of the best jimping on any knife I've had in a long, long time. The action on this, it's reverse flick only, but it doesn't have an aperture. It only has a fuller and the fuller on it works so well. The handles on it, 
very unique looking handles on it because they're done in a heavy coarse burlap micarta the overall lines of the knife looks unique it just looks like an s and when you get in and hand you're like wow that really really works one of the most secure grips you're going to have on a knife jimping everywhere which a lot of times i'm not a fan of it but on this knife you've got jimping here you've got jimping there it just sits in your hand really really well and like i said i love the way it not only is that fuller really functional but it's also attractive it is a gorgeous gorgeous knife um, the action on it, insanely good. It just slams open. Um, the, like, watch this, super, super smooth. For a budget knife with a light blade, that action is insane. All the BD on EDC knife stuff has been great so far. Pocket clip, in and out of pocket. There's a couple issues with it, but it's really, really comfortable. So, uh, I love everything about almost every Pinkerton design so far. And this is not a, you know, that's not a departure. So with that being said, guys, that's the end of this video. That was eight crazy knives that are here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let's turn this around. We'll do some final thoughts and I'll send you out about your day. Guys, yeah, that's it on this one. Um, I think out of all those, they were all pretty crazy. Some of them not as crazy as others, uh, but this one is is the one that stands out as crazy with a purpose. It's crazy and, and weird to look at, but when you realize what it's for, this is probably, it's got to be that crazy. It just has to be. It's just part of the design. It has to be that nuts. So with that being said, guys, that's it on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm going to throw a link to a sponsor in here. Do you guys know I have sponsored links down below? Coffee Brand Coffee, Tempered Trail have got discounts built into their links that'll save you 10% at checkout. I have a coupon code as well that will save you 10% at Fair and Forge Knife Works, 10% at Rosecraft Blades, 10% at Katsu Knives. And if you like that Gara from Beyond EDC, I can save you 40% with it. It's crazy sharp, all one word, all lowercase. Yeah, that is the coupon code. I also have affiliate links to all the major vendors down below. Take those if you're going to buy knives, please buy them down there uh, with those links. It supports the channel. I also have an Amazon store. You can take that link, pin it your browser user for all your Amazon shopping. It doesn't, none of those cost you anything at checkout. They just support the channel a little bit. Um, I also have a public discord that I've built. It says join the community down in the description, in the description below the actual write-up and all the purchase links. And I have a membership where you can get in on it. I, ha I do giveaways. I have exclusive content. There's a private discord server and there's a premium tier sharpening tutorial series. So guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. I'll see you in the next video.